it's about time we add one of the all-time greats to our Recreating Iconic Drum Sound series, Nick Mason. In the mid-1960s, a young band formed in the English underground. The four musicians were Sid Barrett, Roger Waters, Richard Wright, and Nick Mason. Little did they know, they were starting what was to become one of the biggest rock bands of all time, Pink Floyd, named after the two blues musicians Pink Anderson and Floyd Council. In the following years, they gained some popularity in the British underground, signed a record deal with EMI, and played more and more shows. At that time, Sid Barrett was struggling with mental issues paired with drug abuse, which finally led to him leaving the band and David Gilmour taking over. This lineup change also kicked off role changes inside the band. All four members kept contributing to their songwriting process, while Roger Waters mainly took over writing the lyrics and leading the band regarding their artistic visions. The first releases with this new four-piece lineup are the soundtrack More and Amagama, both released in 1969. In 1970, the band's fifth studio album, Adam Heart Mother, was the first to hit number one on the British album charts and rang in their commercially most successful period. Just three years later, Pink Floyd released what was to become their most successful album ever, Dark Side of the Moon. This concept album broke records and is among the five best-selling albums of all time. Besides that, it's also the album with the most weeks in the Billboard album charts. Just by those two facts alone, you can guess that this release also opened up new doors and made them not only one of the most sought after bands in the UK, but also worldwide. Let's have a listen to Money, the most famous single on this album. Yes, it's a song in 7-8, uncommon for a 1970s rock album, especially since it's the most successful track of the album. But just to mention that, it later switches to 4-4 for the guitar solo. Now that we've talked about the band before, it's time to talk about the only constant member, and the only one appearing on all their studio albums, drummer Nick Mason. Not only is he the steady groove behind all their songs, but also has a share in their songwriting. In the early years, Mason played premier drums before switching to Ludwig in the 1970s and then to DW in the 1990s. One of the main sources of inspiration for our recreation is the Live in Pompeii concert movie, released in 1972, only one year before the release of Dark Side of the Moon. Mason can be seen playing a double bass drum kit with four toms and this is exactly what we did. But let's start with a snare. Since Mason used what appears to be a Ludwig Superphonic for the Pompeii concert, we also picked an aluminum drum, a 14 by 6.5 Pearl Sensitone aluminum to be precise. With a coated ambassador in a medium low tuning, and two mini muffs as muffling, the snare is almost ready. Almost, because the snare wires needed some tweaking too. Pascal used tape to shorten the wires. Captured with two biodynamic M201s, one as top and one as bottom mic, this is what it sounds like. Oh, and if you want to sound like Nick Mason on this famous tune, don't play rim shots. All other drum shells are from Pearl's President Deluxe line. You might know this kit from multiple other recreation episodes, but it simply works really well for vintage drum sounds like this one. Since Mason liked to play two kick drums, one 22 inches, one 24 inches, we did the same. But since we don't need the 22 inch kick drum for either of the two songs we picked, this one is mainly for the look. The 24 inch however is fitted with an ambassador coated batter head and the close stock reza head with a felt strip for muffling. Inside the kick drum is a pillow for some additional muffling. This is the tuning and the microphone we used is a TGI-51. The only missing drums are the toms. 12, 13, 14 and 16 inches are the sizes here. 
After checking the Pompeii photos, it was clear we had to use coated ambassador heads here as well. Luckily enough, those were already fitted on the drums since the last video we shot with this kit was the Ian Pace one. Haven't seen this episode? Make sure to do so. The Rezo heads are the clear stock ones. The tuning on all toms is in a medium range And for the rack toms, the rezzo head is a third higher than the batter head, while with the floor toms, the rezzo head is a second higher than the batter head. Even though there are a lot of pictures showing Mason's kits with one mic between two toms, we decided to place one mic per tom for a more direct sound. For this video, we picked M88s for this purpose. For the right length and overtones, we dialed in the internal mufflers and Pascal placed some tape on the rezzo heads. After mixing, this is what they sound like. The other mics around the kit are an MC950 for the hi-hat, two M90 Pro Xs as overheads, and an M201 as room mic. But wait, the cymbals are still missing. The most characteristic part of his Pompeii cymbal setup are the three cymbals on his right-hand side. Reportedly, he played Zildjian cymbals back then, but he's more famous for being a Pisces guy later on. However, the cymbals we picked for this part of his setup are 18, 20, and 22-inch Avidus models, with a 20-inch one being used as the main ride. Those not only sound pretty similar, but the look also fits very well. The hi-hats we picked are from the same line, 15-inch Avidus hats and a 16-inch K Dark Crash Thin completes the setup. Enjoy Pascal's version of this song. What do you think about this recreation? Ready for a second world famous Pink Floyd song? Before we get to that, just a short reminder that if you want to support our channel and help us sustain the recreating iconic drum sounds video series, we have a donation link in the description and you can also support us by checking out our sample and loops packs at shop.artofdrumming.com. The Pink Floyd sample pack is now available as well. Thank you all so much for your support. We will now skip two Pink Floyd albums. Wish You Were Here from 1975 and Animals from 1977 and go straight to their second best-selling album ever, The Wall. And you might have guessed the song we chose, Another Brick in the Wall Part 2. We kept the same kit and only changed some details regarding snare and kick drum. For the snare, we removed both mini muffs and added some tape and tissues. The tuning, however, stayed exactly the same. Check it out. The kick drum changes quite drastically. If you compare both songs, the bass drum sound here has a lot more attack and appears to be shorter. The easiest way to achieve a similar sound is by removing the batter head of the kick drum. We then placed two blankets and a pillow inside the drum and moved the mic inside the shell. Here is what the sounds like mixed. Of course some more things change during the mixing process and if you're interested in this part of our sound recreation, head over to artofdrumming.com where you can find a free detailed mixing breakdown video. Here's an excerpt of Pascal's performance. We don't need no education. 
This is one of the most famous rock songs ever, don't you agree? Which of those two drum sounds would you prefer, and what other Pink Floyd songs are out there that you think should be mentioned when talking about Nick Mason's outstanding drum sound? Make sure to leave a comment, subscribe to our channel, and also ring the bell if you don't want to miss any upcoming Recreating Iconic Drum Sounds videos.